few people how much you love them. Amen. If you don't love them, fake it till you make it. I'm just kidding. Don't fake it. <laughs> that was a joke. Tell them you love them. Tell them how good it is to see them. Tell them you like them. Tell them the hair looks nice. Try not to lie. Let's start this service off right. This is the roll call for junior campers. If there's a junior camper in the hallway and you see him with a white band on, send him to the platform. We want to hear him sing. Junior campers, everybody that's a junior camper. Amen. Everybody that's a junior camper. Seniors, all of you seniors, listen to me. All you seniors, listen to me. Senior campers, listen to me. Senior campers, listen to me, everybody. These kids have worshiped with you all week. They shouted with you. They ran with you. They prayed over here in the corner with you. I know sometimes we can just discount, but I'm going to tell you, they've been troopers with you, so I need you to help them out, okay? Worship with them. These kids mean a lot to Jesus Christ, and we want them to feel like that they mean a lot to us. We're so glad our junior campers. Let's give all of our juniors one more round of applause as they get ready to sing.
Let your heart be praised. Let your hands begin to praise God right now. Let's begin to call the name of Jesus together right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We've had such an exciting week of camp this week. I've enjoyed it with the junior counselors. We've had a great time. But in the middle of each service, we begin to hear the word of God come forth out of the mouths of ministers. And we begin to be challenged and we begin to be brought to a place of worship. And we begin to be heard and we begin to change the way we thought, to change the way we live. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you heard. It doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter what you've done right here. If you don't take this back with you, then there's nothing that ever happened here. You see, the children of Israel were already doomed. Haman already had the, the, the gallows made. But all of a sudden, Mordecai wrote a letter to his niece and he said, if you don't lift up your voice, if you remain silent in this time, then the praise is going to come from somebody else. If you remain silent, then somebody else will take it to the next level. Somebody else is going to take it to the generation. God is going to have a church. God is going to take it to this next generation. He's already taken it from one place. We were Gentiles first. It went to the Jews and it came to us. And if we don't begin to lift up our voice, if we don't want to carry this word, then he will find somebody that will. So tonight is your last opportunity to get a change. Tonight is your last opportunity to get your voice, to get your sound, to get your worship, to get your praise. So right now as the singers come, as the musicians begin to play, why don't every voice be raised? Why don't every heart be lifted? Why don't every hand be clapping? Because God is great and greatly to be praised. Come on, put your hands together tonight. Somebody make a joyful noise. Come on, make a joyful noise.
to hear me when that Tuesday night rolled around I was right down here in the front and I seen a river of anointing that was flowing torrential but when I got down there in my vision it was only right about here it was only a little bit above my stomach and the Lord said before you get done now they didn't know about any of this I didn't tell them we didn't plan this he said before you get done with this week there will be waters that you're gonna have to swim in and I feel like there's some young people that did not come in here with joy or you came in here with a little bit of joy but now the river is rising and you need to prophesy right now and say it's over my head say, it's over my head it's over my head
the Holy Ghost too From the top of my head So to my feet I cut the spirit of it all over me You should have been there When I prayed through The church was on fire And the Holy Ghost too From the top of my head So to my feet I cut the spirit of it all over me So I've got the river Of living water The Holy Ghost river Of living water Don't 
Come on, we had eight people get the Holy Ghost last night. We had eight people get baptized in the name of Jesus. We're getting ready to baptize one of the people who got the Holy Ghost tonight. Savannah's going down in Jesus' name. I believe by the power of God, miracles are in the atmosphere. The supernatural's getting ready to happen. Come on, somebody. I cannot just stand there and act like I have never had God do anything for me. she started dancing on the other side of the Red Sea. Some people can spectate, but some people cannot spectate. They've got to participate because they've got to have the joy of the Lord. And where there was once bondage, now there's freedom. And where there was once issues, now there's glory. Come on, somebody. I wish somebody would join with a bunch of young people and say, hey, I praise God with you. I worship God with you. I know you wouldn't wear you. I know you weren't where you are right now on Tuesday night. And since you've been delivered, you should have been there when I prayed through. The church was on fire. The Holy Ghost. Well, I'll be good. I'm done. Clap your hands unto the Lord and shout yes unto God or hallelujah. Let there be an affirmation of declaration in this place. We worship you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can turn to a place of standing. If you can return to a place of standing. If you can't, just stay right where you're at. Hallelujah. I like when young people can't return to a place of standing. That's okay with me too. We're going to take up this evening's offering. We're asking for the group to come at this time. Amen. Let them do what they feel like the Holy Ghost is telling them to sing. Any more we're excited that they're here. Believe God's going to do something extraordinary tonight. Thank you, visitors, for being with us tonight. Young people, let's give all the visitors a round of applause. Amen. Ushers, if you'll get ready right now. Amen. Come take up this evening's offering. Amen. You give unto the Lord.
dance in your presence, God. Amen. I want the camp choir to start making their way to this platform, but I need them to back me here. I want Brother Roberts, amen, to come out here. Here in just a second, I'll let him get prepared. Amen. Brother Patrick Harvey, amen, and Brother Worley, and Brother Weir, and Brother Chris have all done an amazing job preaching to us every night. Amen. Brother Weir kicked it off, and uh, the Bible says to give honor where honor's due, and too many times... We try to push honor to the back side of a back burner somewhere, but I believe fully in honoring the men of God. And so I want us to uh, just extend our appreciation, amen, to Brother Weir and Brother Harvey and Brother Worley and Brother Chris as they come out here, amen. Let's give them a, a hand of appreciation for obeying the Holy Ghost every night. Brother Weir, amen, kicked it off. Amen, we're so thankful for your ministry. I love you. Amen. Where's Brother Harvey at? Amen. Where's Brother Harvey at? Brother Harvey's out stealing things, hubcaps off your cars. There he is. <laughs> Amen. My friend, Brother Patrick Harvey, I love him dearly. Amen. Brother Worley and Brother Chris. Amen. I love them dearly. Amen. I want them to all know how much I appreciate them. Amen. And Brother Roberts. Amen. I don't know if you can get out here without getting trampled by the that's why I try to do two things at once. I'm not a big fan of dead space. Hallelujah. Amen. There's Brother Roberts. Junior kids, why don't you give Brother Roberts a hand clap? All of our senior camp. Brother Chris, I don't know if you're going to do a good job or not, but I'm going to go ahead and give you a card anyway. So far, so far. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Campers, give them a hand clap one more time. All you campers, if you're appreciative, I believe there's a camper that got their life changed this week. God bless you all. Amen. Our, our camp choir hadn't sang all week long. And guess what? They're the majority of this sanctuary tonight. So we're going to, hey, if they're going to sing, you got to do the praising. Anybody ready to help the camp choir as they come?
feet on solid ground. Need my help in the storm. Give me strength to carry on. Call him up. He answers prayer. I know the Lord will show me. Paul said, all right. Don't make it all right. All right. All right. Don't make it all right. All right. All right. Don't make it all right. All right. All right. Don't make it all right. All right. All right. Don't make it all right. All right. Don't make it all right. All right. Don't make it all right. old school songs right here because I directed this in the 2000s and I remember my dad singing I've got a feeling in the 90s or 80s <laughs> I know it's old school songs but I really feel like in this place there's a word in this for some young person and I want brother Chris to get ready to come but I feel like there's a word for some young person because you might go home and you're the only person in your youth group I know there's at least one young lady in this room that when she goes back to her home she has nowhere to go to church. Her mom and her dad are backslid, and she is going home, and she has got the Holy Ghost this summer, and she's been baptized in Jesus' name this summer, and I know that she's going to have some times where she feels all alone, and there's going to have to come a time where you're going to go to a bathroom mirror and look in that mirror and say, oh, oh, oh I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, oh, oh I've got a feeling. Everything's gonna be alright, so I've got a feeling Everything's gonna be alright, be alright, be alright, be alright Somebody clap your hands and shout yes to the Lord, hallelujah We give you praise, Jesus We give you praise, Jesus Yila marata When you're down and you're down and out Jesus, he will bring you out. He'll pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on solid ground. He'll be your help when you feel all alone. He'll give you strength to carry on. Call him up. He answers prayer. I know the Lord will serve me there. Somebody shout, all right. Come on, shout, all right. It'll be all right. Look at your neighbor and tell him, it'll be all right. Brother Cooper's in the sound booth. He's been there every night. His wife's been right beside him. All four of his kids is at Judah. And last night, he came in the sound room. He said, I got something to tell everybody. He said, all of my family now has been able to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I know he's been sacrificing. They just closed on their house today, and it was a sacrifice for them to just be here this week. But God filled all their children with the Holy Ghost. 
Ethan got the Holy Ghost last night. God's not finished yet. Pouring his spirit out on all flesh. Well, I've been in services before in our church where we had five people waiting in line to get baptized. I've never been in a service where eight people in a row just, I got to get baptized right now in the name of Jesus. We had visitors getting baptized. It's their first time at camp. They just showed up and said, I got to get baptized tonight. People getting the Holy Ghost all over the place. Young people, children, adults getting the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to tell you the same God that can do that, a Judah can do that in every church that's represented in this building. You go back, you put everything you got behind your pastor, and you get in that prayer room and you pray. And when you get done praying, I'm going to tell you, the Holy Ghost is going to show up and revival is going to hit your city. I dispatch in the name of Jesus angels to every city that's represented in this building. I dispatch angels to every city represented in this building. Let them stand on every corner of that city, on the east, the west, and the north, and the south. We speak to the direction saying give up, and we prophesy to a wind to blow on dry bones right now. I prophesy to every wind, east wind, north wind, south wind, west wind. I prophesy the blowing wind of the Holy Ghost to blow on dry bones in every city that's represented in this building. By the authority of the Word of God, you send a prophet the side of bones uh, we don't even know if they can live but you know if they can live it's not our job to know if they can live so I just prophesy in the name of Jesus receive life receive life in Jesus name every backslider that's tucked away in every corner of every city receive life in Jesus name all right I'm done the man of God tonight is Brother Jonathan Chris. He needs no introduction. He's been preaching Camp Judah since 2013. Amen. I'm thankful for his ministry, and I'm thankful that he's here tonight. I want you to find a place to stand and clap your hands as the man of God comes of the hour. Oh, come on. Give Jesus praise right now. I know you've been doing it a little while, but why don't you just give him a praise? Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voices with that praise right now. He'll make it all right. Yeah, yeah. Man, I'm feeling good in the Holy Ghost tonight. Praise God. You going to help me preach for a few minutes? Be seated if you'd like. What an honor it is to be in Camp Judah. I feel sorry for anybody that has never experienced Camp Judah. Let me say this. I, um, on the Monday, it may have been Tuesday, I was, uh, I was in the room and <clears throat> just reminiscing and thinking back over all the camps that I have been to. Now, if you go to sleep, I'm throwing water on you. But <laughs> reminiscing, you know, over all the camps that I've been to, I don't know of any that I've been to any more powerful than this one right here. Never. Amen. But there was a man that preached and uh, stirred my soul as a teenager was probably 14, 15 years old. I was probably 14 at the time. The man preached. We got somebody here tonight that's been in that same facility just this last year that I accepted my call to preach from. That man preached, and I'll never forget that night that I lifted my hands to the Lord during a powerful service. And I said, God, that's what you want me to do. I'll do it. it was at a youth camp that God burned a blister on my soul and I haven't been the same since have I been perfect oh no I still ain't but I'm telling you one thing I've been forgiven 
And God has given us great victory and great revival. And if you want revival, you can have revival. If you want a move of God, you can have a move of God. Well, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Anybody want it? So I've never been paid in advance or given a car. Hey, I don't know. I, I, that was not supposed to come out. <laughs> I love <laughs> That, that, uh, sorry. It's all right. It's going to be all right. You love me? Yeah, I need to check, see if there's anything in that card. Praise God. I know what to do with it. Sister Chris. Come here, babe. I couldn't be nothing without a good godly wife. Come here. I am who I am because of this lady's prayer and faithfulness. I believe there's preacher's wives all over this building. God's going to grant a great man, a great preacher, a great wife. And I hope it's just like this one who prays and believes God and stands behind the man of God. Aren't you glad for the preacher's wife? Thank you, brother and sister Van Lou, for what you do. Hallelujah. I feel all right. I'm just trying to get comfortable here. Y'all scaring me just looking at me. I smell the pizza on your breath, to be honest with you. Amen. Jude chapter 1 and verse 3. Jude chapter 1 and verse 3. I don't really smell the pizza on your breath. Lord, I need your help. Jude chapter 1 and verse 3. Beloved. When I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now you've had great preaching. And now you got me. You needed them. Now I need you. You're going to have to help me just for a little while. I want to preach what the Holy Ghost has given me and laid on my heart. Amen. My title tonight is The Story the World Will Never Write. The story the world will never write. Lay down your Bibles or your iPads or your iPhones or whatever it is. Get everything out your hands and get your hands in the air and your voice lifting. And let's ask God to have a great, His great way in this place. God, we need you. We need your touch tonight. I'm asking you, God, to move on every heart, mind, and soul. God, touch us with your power and your presence. In the name of the Lord, I feel you moving even right now. I know, God, you're getting ready to do something great. We're going home with new, fresh fire and fresh power, a greater anointing and another level. We thank you for it, God. We know you're getting ready to do something powerful in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. You can be seated if you're going to help me preach. There was a lawyer once whose name was Francis Scott Key. He penned the song that I know you have heard. It's called the National Anthem. It is our song as an American. It's sung at all ball games and, and churches around the world and around our nation. The words float over our lips and our minds, and we don't even know what we're singing. Most of us have memorized it as a child, or most of it anyway, until it's time to get up and sing it and you miss something. But we don't even know exactly what it means. So I'd like to, if you haven't heard it already, tell you a story. Francis Scott Key was a lawyer in Baltimore. The colonies were engaged in Vicious conflict with the mother country, Britain. Because of the conflict and the protractiveness of it, they had accumulated prisoners on both sides. 
The American colonies had accumulated prisoners and the British had prisoners. And the American government had initiated a move. They went to the British and said, let us negotiate for the release of these prisoners. We want to send a man out to discuss this with you. And they were holding the American prisoners in boats about a thousand yards offshore. And they said, we want to send a man by the name of Francis Scott Key. He will come out and negotiate to see if we can make a mutual exchange. On the appointed day in a rowboat, he went out to this boat and he negotiated with the British officials and they reached a conclusion that men could be exchanged on a one-for-one -one basis. Francis Scott Key, jubilant that he had been successful, went down below in the boats and what he found was a cargo hold full of humanity, men. He said, men, I, I got news for you tonight. You're free. He said, tonight I have negotiated successfully your return to the colonies. He said, you will be taken out of this boat, out of this filth, and out of your chains. As he went back up on board and to arrange for their passage to the shore, the admiral came and he, he said, we have a slight problem. Are you still with me? We will still honor our commitment to release these men, but it will be merely academic after tonight. After tonight, it won't matter. Francis said, what do you mean? He said, well, Mr. Key, tonight we have laid an ultimatum upon the colonies. Your people will either capitulate and lay down the colors of that flag that you think so much of. Or you will see, you see that fort right over there, Fort Henry? He said, we are going to remove it from the face of the earth. Francis said, how are you going to do that? If you will scan the horizon to see, the admiral said, as, and as he looked, he could see hundreds of little dots. And he said that the entire British war fleet was there. He said, all of the gunpowder. All of the armament is being called upon to demolish that fort. It will be within striking distance in a matter of two and a half hours. He said, the war's over and these men will be free anyway. He said, you can't shell that fort. He said, that, that's a large fort and it's full of women and children. It's, it's predominantly not even a military fort. He said, don't worry about it. He said, we, we've left them a way out. Francis asked, well, what's that? He said, do you see that flag way up on the rampart? We have told them that if they lower that flag, that the shelling will stop immediately. And we will know that they have surrendered, and you will now be under British rule. Francis went back down below and he told the men what was about to happen. They asked how many ships there were and he said there are hundreds. The ships got closer and Francis went back up top and said, Men, I will shout down to you what's going on as I'm watching. And as twilight began to fall and as the haze hung over the ocean as a desert sunset, suddenly the British wore fleet unleashed. He said the sound was deafening. There was so many guns that there was uh, no release and it was absolutely impossible to talk or to hear. Suddenly the sky, although dark, was lit but from down below all the prisoners were saying was tell us Francis where the flag is. What have they done with the flag? Is the flag still flying over the rampart? Tell us. One hour. Two hours. Three hours. Into the shelling. Every time a bomb 
would explode and it would be close to the flag. They could see the flag in the illuminated red glare of that bomb and Francis Scott Key would report down to the men below, it's still up. It's not down. The admiral came and said, your people are insane. He said, what is the matter with them? He said, don't they understand this is an impossible situation? Francis Scott Key said, he remembered what George Washington had said. He said, the thing that sets the American Christian apart from all other people in the world is he will die on his feet before he will live on his knees. The admiral said, we have now instructed all of the guns to focus on the rampart to take that flag down. He said, we don't understand something. Our reconnaissance tells us that that flag has been hit directly again. Are y'all still with me? Again and again. And yet it is still flying. He said, we don't understand that. He said, now we are about to bring every gun for the next three hours to bear on that point. Francis Scott Key said the barrage was unmerciful. All that he could hear was the men down below praying the prayer, God, keep that flag flying where we last saw it. Sunrise came, he said, there was a heavy mist laying over the land, but the rampart was tall enough. There stood the flag, completely nondescript in shreds. The flagpole itself was at a crazy angle, but the flag was still at the top. Francis went aboard and immediately went into the Fort Henry after all of that to see what had happened. What he found that happened was that that flagpole and that flag had suffered uh, repetitious direct hits and when it hit, had fallen but men, somebody say men, fathers who knew what it meant for that flag to be on the ground, although knowing that all of the British guns were trained on it, walked over and held it up humanly until they died. Their bodies were, moved, were removed and others took their place. Francis Scott Key said what held that flagpole in place at that unusual angle were patriots' bodies. And he penned the song, Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming for the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? The debt was demanded. The price, it was paid, ladies and gentlemen. The price is still being paid for us to have the liberties that we have and the freedom that we have. And I wish you'd give God praise for the great men and women that have given their lives on foreign souls for our freedom. I would like if I could tonight I'm thankful for all of that but there was somebody else that shed their blood for my freedom and I'd like to stay dignified tonight but when I think of the goodness of Jesus mm, hallelujah all that he's done for me, my soul cries out.
My soul cries out. My soul cries out. Thank God for saving me. Give the Lord praise. The one who died for me said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. I hear another verse that said, come unto me, all ye that are weary. And it'll get better here in a minute maybe. And heavy laden. And I will give you rest. I'm thankful tonight that we've got a God who knows how to work things out in our life. I'm thankful tonight that we've got a God who knows how to help us when we're down. But I want you to know that this Christian life that we live is not a life for wimps and cowards. This apostolic, well, hallelujah, this apostolic way that we're walking in is not for those that are weak of heart. If you thought that you could get in church and you'd never have a problem and you'd never have a bad situation, I got news for you. There's trouble that's coming. There's trials that's coming. There's bad situations that's coming. So you're going to have, oh, I know, I know that's not popular, but you're going to have to get some grit about you. You're going to have to get you a backbone that says, I can take a licking. But I'm going to keep on ticking. Somebody shout yes. Hallelujah. You can be seated. You got to get some grit about yourself. If you're going to stand in this hour, there is a stand your ground law that some of you are familiar with. It is called sometimes the line in the sand. No duty to retreat. It is a justification in a criminal case whereby defendants can stand their ground and use force without retreating in order to protect and defend themselves or others against threats or perceived threats. An example is where there is no duty to retreat from any place where they have a lawful right to be and that they may use any level of force if they reasonably believe the threat rises to the level of being an imminent or an immediate threat of serious bodily harm and or death. The difference is, is in the spiritual world, there is and we have no duty to retreat. We always have the right to stand our ground. We always have a right to draw a line in the sand. We always have a right to, to say, I refuse to retreat. I refuse to backslide. I refuse to give up. I, I'll get over here in just a little bit and start hitting some stuff over here. It might help a little while. Hey, Amen. But just bear with me. I need this side to help me just for a little while because I'm going to transfer in just a minute. And I'm going to start walking down these pews over here because there's some of you that's fighting a battle in your mind. And you're thinking, you know what? It's good for Judah and it's good for this time and this moment. But I've got news for you. You can have victory every day of your life. I know it's been a warfare. I know it's been a fight. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's a joy that's going to come in the morning uh, if you could just hang in there a little while longer. Oh, I'm going to fish until I find it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil beat you down. Don't let the devil beat you up. Don't let the devil say, amen, that you have no right. I've got a right to praise the Lord. I've got a right to lift my voice. Ain't nobody got a right like the children of the Lord that seen the light. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've got a right. You've got a right to lift your hands. You've got a right to lift your voice. You've got a right to praise the Lord. You've got a right to have victory. You've got a right to have deliverance. You've got a right to come out from among them. 
You've got a right. Ah, yeah. Somebody give the Lord another hand clap of praise. I came back up. I can't quit. Hallelujah. In the early 50s, the Korean conflict of war that was going on, there were two superpowers that were fighting over a piece of ground. Thank God for allies and help. The Soviet Union wanted to take the bottom half of the Korean Peninsula. Ladies and gentlemen, we had some help, and we were able to stand our ground and push them back to where that they belonged. And, uh, and I've got a lot that I could say about that, but I, I'll just leave it alone tonight. I just I suffice it to say that the enemy has did his best to take back some ground in our life. But in Camp Judah, we begin to push them back. Amen. To that 38th parallel, if you will. To that place that that enemy belongs. Amen. North of his border, if you will. I've come to preach to you, ladies and gentlemen. We've already made it that far. Why in the world would you want to go home and lose any kind of ground that we've gained in this? I uh, was doing a little study on, anybody ever heard of Outpost Harry? It was one of the last posts toward the end of the war, 1953, June 10 through 17, I believe it was, or so, 1953. There they was, and they had to keep this ground. They had to stand their ground. But before they got there, the Chinese had implanted and put speakers, amen, uh, all through that hill, amen, that particular place that that post was, outpost Harry, there were intercom systems and sound systems that were placed strategically on the side of that hill. And from June the 10th to June the 17th, Every day when the regiment would change and the troops would change and, and people would come in as relief as they were taking the wounded down and the dead down and the new guys were coming up, and they would hear on the intercom. The intercom, the Chinese were saying, it's going to be a long night tonight, boys. We're going to get you tonight, boys. You'll never come back the same, boys. Is it really worth it, boys, to climb that hill? And in spite of hearing all of the negative talk from the enemy, they just kept on climbing the hill. They just kept on going. They just kept on going. They just kept on climbing. Oh, my God. I've come to preach to some people right now, some young folks right now, that the enemy's built in an intercom uh, in your ear that's saying, uh, why'd you shout this week? Uh, why did you try to climb the hill this week? Uh, you need to let the devil know, uh, I'm not quitting. Uh, I'm going to keep climbing. I'm going to stand my ground, and we're going to have the greatest revival that my church has ever seen, uh, that my community has ever. Is there anybody that believes it? Come on, give him praise right now. Their slogan was, hold at all costs. Hold at a bohoshata. Hold at all costs. Hold on. Somebody shout, hold on. Somebody shout, hold on. At the end of the war. They put a they put a museum in in one of the places in Fort Fort Benning, Georgia. Amen. And and inside there they have a plaque that just simply said, We held. We held. We held. Uh, come on, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. 
You just got to keep holding on. Somebody say, hold on. Hold on. I had a young man in my church about 87 years old when he passed away. He began to tell me stories of being in the Korean conflict. And he told me, he said, in the middle of the night, he said, I'd find my way across the enemy lines. He said, because, he said, I was trying to find out where the enemy was. He said, it was a bloody battle. I said, brother, did they ask you to do it? He said, no. He said, I just wanted to know where they was. So I knew where to shoot. So I knew who to get, how to take care of the enemy. I said, why did you do something that they didn't ask you to do? He said, brother, Chris, I just wanted to go home. I just wanted to go home. I didn't want to stay over there. I didn't want to die over there. He said, I wanted to win that war. My brothers and my sisters, if you think you're going to win, kick back and at ease in Zion with your feet propped up, you've got another thing coming. You will only win if you're willing to fight. If you're willing to go for it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can be seated. I think tonight that what we need is some apostolics that love this truth. And they love this truth more than they love anything. They love, love this truth more than they love ball teams. They love this truth, come on somebody, more than they love LeBron, God forbid, that you would love him. And they love this truth, amen, more than they love shopping and vacationing and recreation. Well, hallelujah. I'm going to tap in in just a minute. Praise God. The Bible said because they love not the truth... God would send a strong delusion upon them and they'd believe a lie and be damned. My brothers and my sisters, you know what makes you a candidate for the deception of God? Hmm. The Bible said that you'd be hated for his namesake. Huh? But the book said all you have to do is fail to love the truth. And you're a candidate for deception. That means when your man, I'm going to preach to our young folks tonight. When your man of God gets behind the pulpit and he begins to break the bread of life about here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. It ought to be more than just old hat to you. It ought to be something you're in love with. Don't you ever turn your back on the truth. Don't you ever quit on doctrinal preaching when the man of God stands up and starts preaching the word of God about come out from among them and be ye separate, thus saith the Lord. Don't you sit on your man of God. You need to get on your feet and say, I want you to know, preacher, I ain't quitting. I ain't stopping. I'm helping you. I'm still believing. I still know it's the truth. I love it. Come on, somebody shout, I love it. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friends, if you can fall in love with the truth, it's going to help you. Because if you're a candidate of deception, because you didn't love it, then there's a flip side to the corn coin. That if I love it, I'm a candidate for the blessings of the Lord. What are you trying to preach? I'm trying to preach to you. Don't you ever turn your back on this glorious truth. Fall in love with it. Because it's going to be the greatest blessing that's ever hit your life. It's the love of the truth. I'm going to test you out right now. They said, what must we do to be saved? I heard the word of the Lord say, repent and be baptized. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right, now I've tested you a little bit. If that's old hat to you, you need to get a hold of a new love for this truth. If that don't set you on fire, you need a new love for this truth. If that's just dull to you, you need to get yourself in an altar and fall in love with it again. Praise God. You can be seated. I think the Bible said, I got to quicken down the way. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who's above all, through all. You get me? And in you all. Come on. Neither is there salvation in any other name, for there's none other name. Yeah, 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 yeah. None other name given among me a weapon. We must be saved. You must be born again of the water and of the spirit. Well, yeah, hallelujah. Is there anybody, I feel like I'm in a church that still believes that tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord another hand clap of praise. like to just blow this thing up tonight if I could, but it is what it is. I'm here doing what I got to do. We live in a world that's throwing in the towel on doctrinal preaching. They're scared to offend you because you sit there and you sulk when a man of God starts preaching to you the word of God. You bring a visitor in. And you start getting nervous when he starts telling the difference between the holy and the profane. This PC generation has about choked out a move of the Holy Ghost. I'll just tell you, I'm not about being mean and ugly. But brother, if you want a watered down message, you need to find another preacher somewhere that's got a jellyfish backbone that don't care about your soul. But you are looking at one tonight, and you're looking at a bunch of others uh, that says, I refuse to preach uh, anything except what thus saith the Lord. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can't find two or three other ways. There's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I'm glad to know who Jesus is, and I refuse to quit preaching it. I refuse to quit living it. I love it. Somebody shout, I love it. Hallelujah. I, I just, I, you know, dear God, be seated for a minute. Oh, I'm dropping a watermelon. I might as well do it good. Praise God. Stand up, buddy. Walk across the front of that church. Just walk across it. Huh? I think that's the way a young man ought to walk. Can I preach? Can I preach? Is this all right? I want to preach just for a minute. I want to preach the way they preach to me at youth camp. I got news for you. That speech impediment that Moses had, huh? I don't believe it was praise the Lord.
I'm about tired. Is there anybody that's sick and tired of the sissified man that won't get no gravel in his throat, that won't get no grit in his gizzard, that don't know how to shout until a shirt tail comes out, that's wearing about his poofed up hair? But come on, somebody. My God, we need to get a hold of this thing again. We need to tell the difference. I knew I'd touch on something. <laughs> Hallelujah. I come to youth camps. I'm not complaining. I just want to point a couple of little things out. Be seated. It ain't here just in Louisiana, perhaps. I just want to see if you like this message. Jordan Blake, come here, boy. I'm so proud of you, Judah Blake. I'm proud of you. This was preaching, going places, and God's using him. And I'm thankful for it. Come follow me, buddy. But the minute that you start seeking position, more than a move of God, me and you're going to have trouble. Somebody looked at him, and, I, and somebody was joking with him about it here. But I, I heard somebody say, well, he only preaches about, and, and that this is not in reference to who said it here. Amen. But he only preaches about 10 minutes. I said, a good preacher is somebody who knows how to shut up when there's a move of the Holy Ghost. Because I want you to do, let me preach to some of you young preachers. It's more than just having something to say. This is about a move of the Holy Ghost. And if there ain't people being changed, and if there's not anybody being delivered, then what are we doing this for? It ain't about our voice. It's about his voice. It ain't about who I am. It's about who he is. This world that we live in that's looking for self-aggrandizement and put me up here, pastor, and put me over there, pastor. I believe it's making God sick. When's the last time you rolled in the floor? When's the last time you got carpet burned on your forehead? Come on, somebody. There's a generation that's growing up here that's saying, you know what? I'm not looking for position. I'm not looking, uh, amen, to see who sits on the left or who sits on the right. I just want the Lord to know I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to live for him. I'm ready to see a move of his spirit. Hallelujah. Go ahead, stand up. I'm done. Hallelujah. Come on, young ladies. It's all right. I want you to be able to go home and feel all right about looking like apostolic young ladies. Our young ladies, I'm so proud of them. They... They've come to youth camp, and I've watched them as, as the rest of you have done the same. But I know these young ladies. And I've watched them come and pour their heart out and seen God do great things in their life. And I'm so thankful for that. But when you get home, don't you let the devil weigh on your mind because your mom and daddy didn't do something right. And just say, well, I just don't feel like doing it anymore until maybe next youth camp. You can get a hold of this, and you don't have to go back the same way. You don't ever have to be. You don't ever have to be on the fence again. You get to the house. There ain't nobody praising God, and the prayer rooms are empty. You get in there and light them up. Quit waiting for that one person to light it up. you got. Just give it everything. Hang on. Just give it I know where I'm at. Just give it everything you got. I'd like to leave with a bang here if I could, but probably the bang's already happened. <laughs> we'll just see about that here in a minute. But let me tell you this. The story that the world will never write about me.
God quit. Come on, young folks. You're under the sound of my voice right now. That's my whole mess. I touched on all the rest of it, and I have plenty more to preach, but I feel like I just got to get out of the way now. But my message is simply this. You ought to tell the devil, there is one thing that the world will never write about me. You ought to tell God right now, there is one thing that the world will never write about me. It's where I quit and I gave up. It's where I quit and I gave up. Huh? Is there anybody that would say, Brother Chris, I want you to know that I'm making it up in my mind this week that I refuse that everybody else in my youth group may turn around, but I ain't quitting. I'm hanging on to this message. I'm hanging on to this truth. And I believe it was Paul that said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. I'm going to give you revelation right now. Some of you would say, well, I'm in another fight. You ain't in another fight. You're in the same fight. Notice what Paul said. I have fought a good fight. Not a bunch of them. He said it's been one big fight. But I finished my course. I kept the faith. And on this last night, I want you to know the enemy needs to go ahead and break the pencil and let him know you ain't right where I quit. You ain't right where I gave in. You ain't right where I throw in the towel. I'm living for God. I'm living for God. Come on, give him praise right now. Come on, give him praise right now. That's it. Lift your voice in praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, I dare you to just give him a little more praise right now. I fought a good fight. 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 I finished my course. Yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. Praise it. Yeah, yeah. Come on, break the pin. Break the pin and say, you ain't right where I quit. You ain't right where I backslid. You ain't right where I gave up. You ain't right where I gave in. Break the pin, somebody. Break the pin, somebody. Break it. Break it. If you want to break a pin, I want you to come grab one of these. Come grab it. Break the pin. Just get one until they're gone. Break it. Break it. Destroy it. You're not going to write where I quit. You're not going to write where I gave up. You're not going to write where I gave in. Break it now. Yeah.
told us what we was going to title this camp. Now I feel like that Brother Chris, I didn't sit down with him and say this is what I think you need to do. I feel like that the Holy Ghost has had his way throughout this entire camp and if he really meant it to happen, it would happen. Now we broke the pin. Now some of y'all can't break those pins because they're rooster feathers made up for a quill. So here's what we're going to do. I don't know what the devil's been telling you. I don't know what he's been saying to you. I don't know what he said to you before you came to camp. I'm going to tell you, this is the last, this two weeks in a row. I don't know where Brother Weir is, but two weeks in a row, I have felt like the Lord told me that young people came to a camp suicidal. They were ready to give it up. They were ready to throw in the towel. They were ready to walk away. They were ready to give it all up. Not just church, life. And I'm going to tell you, that spirit that's been weighing over your mind and your head is in this been writing you. He's the one that's been trying to write your story. And what Brother Chris talked about tonight is there's one thing the world will not write. He will not write that I'll be suicidal. He will not write that I will not have joy. He will not write that I quit. Come on. I feel like the Holy Ghost wants us to do one thing before we do anything else. And that is everybody take that feather that he gave out. If you don't have one, just take it symbolically and put it under your feet and just begin to call it out loud. Now, it's going to take your pride to go away, but just begin to call it out loud. I will not let you write the story of me committing suicide. I will not let you write the story of me quitting church this summer. I will not let you write the story of my church not having revival. I will not let you write the story of what you've been telling me in my head. Come on, cry it out loud. Come on, say it out loud. Come on, I want to shut you out of the tell you out of the no matter what the weapon is, I want you to know, God, I know what you will. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, every demonic spirit will come under the authority. Preacher, where's that out of the Bible? The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. Come on, right now, why don't you put your foot down and say, I will not quit. I will not commit adultery. Come out of that spirit that's been trying to 
what the weapon is, I want you to know now it. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that if I'm all down, he'll bring me out. If I'm all there, he'll make a way. If I believe, I will receive everything he promised.
And tonight, I don't know, I'm not a very good artist. It probably shouldn't be me up here. We're going to write a story here. Tonight, we're going to write a chapter in the book of Acts called Acts chapter 29. Acts 1 said you shall receive power. Acts 2 said the Holy Ghost was poured out on all of them. Acts 3 said they killed a lame man. Acts 4 said that the power of God is in his name. For neither is there salvation in any other name. For there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Acts 5, we start seeing the miraculous. Acts 6, we start seeing powerful signs and wonders. And the church begins to multiply. Acts 28 says, we're unstoppable. So I dare a bunch of young people to get up here and just take your time. Don't write on the walls. Don't write on anything. But write something in a book that's blank that says we will have revival. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I command, I command that the Holy Ghost would begin to let you be prophetic. Take your time. That book's not real stable. Take your time. I wish somebody would begin to write your own story. For Acts 29 is unwritten. And it's supposed to be written by a bunch of chapter 929. Uh, young people full of the Holy Ghost. Come on, help me sing, singers. Oh, say. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know.
person. Come on, young person, I want you to praise God. I want you to praise God like Acts 29 is taking place at your church right now. I want you to praise God like angels are being dispatched uh, to accomplish whatever you just wrote in that book. Uh, I know I was supposed to commit suicide, uh, but God. Uh, I know I was supposed to go down, uh, but God. Uh, I know I was supposed to backslide, uh, but God. Uh, and now, there's a new story being written. There's a new story being written. We're unstoppable by the power of the Holy Ghost. getting ready to baptize Jason. Amen. Man, it's like I, and John, Jonathan's brother. We're getting ready to baptize him in Jesus' name. I believe God's going to fill him with the baptism of the Holy Ghost right there in the water. I, I believe I believe that the, that the future of the church is unwritten. There's a blank book. Young people, we can have revival. We can have a move of God. Moms and dads, I love you. Don't leave if you can. If you can stay, we're getting ready to baptize somebody in Jesus' name. If you've got to go, we understand. Amen. After we get down there and we eat, we're going to come back up here. We're going to give out trophies, and we're going to have Junior Judas Got Talent. After that, amen, you can either leave or you can stay. There's not checkout time till tomorrow around noon, around noon or Saturday. You can stay all night if you want to stay. If you've got to hit the road, we understand. Trophies will be given out after we get done eating. I believe God just doing something in this place tonight. Amen. Every young person, I want you to believe whatever you just wrote, wrote down on that book is coming to pass in Jesus' name. I believe young people, amen, you're going to see a move of God. There's young people that's being called into the gifts of the Spirit in this camp. There's young people that's been called in the ministry in this camp. God has done great things uh, throughout the entirety of these services. Uh, thank God for what he's done one last time when you give him praise uh, that don't make no sense. Uh, amen. Act like uh, you're you're in Acts 29 church in this place one last time.
Lord, like a fountain, Lord, like a fountain. 